I'd like to thank Vessi for sponsoring this video. <coughs> oh, uh, hey, hey, Maria, how's it going? Hi, Sid. Not so great if I'm being perfectly honest. Oh, well, gee, golly whiz, Marty, did, what happened to you? Did you get lost on your way to the dryer? Oh, man, I wish. We missed the bus and got caught in the rain. Had to walk all the way home, got totally socked. I mean, soaked. Whoa, 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 whoa. You mean to tell me that she wasn't wearing waterproof shoes? Not at all. It's actually pretty difficult to find a pair of stylish waterproof shoes that pair well with a vast array of outfits, Sid. I gotta stop you right there, Marty. You telling me you don't know nothing about Vessi? Vessi? What's that? Oh, you gotta get yourself a pair of Vessis. They're one of the most comfortable and stylish waterproof sneakers you can wear. They're made from Dymatex, a dual climate knit which keeps you cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Even in the winter? They are a truly everyday sneaker and sustainably made. They are vegan too. Wow, what a life. Imagine nestling up in a dry shoe that stays dry. Rain or snow resists spilled drinks at the bar and the ocean splashing against the soles of your shoes as you walk down the beach admiring the sunset on a romantic vacation in Sicily. You don't have to imagine that life anymore. I got us a pair of Vessies. Holy socks, she can hear us. Make like a pair of slippers and scoot. You guys, I was just gonna tell you about my new pair of Vessies. Oh well, I can tell you. I just got two new pair of Vessies. As you can see, these guys have seen a lot of wear. But I've got a brand new pair in here that I would love to show you today. Where I live, it gets really rainy, especially in the winter, and it's difficult to find a nice casual pair of sneakers that I can kick around in, match with multiple outfits, that also keep my feet nice and warm and dry. Since I got a pair of Vessies, there ain't no looking back. I love that they slip onto my feet so easily, so I just leave them by the door and I go, literally, everywhere in these shoes. I mean, I go to the grocery store, I take walks, I would go walking in the woods in these. I bought a brand new pair of boots right before these arrived and I haven't worn them because I just don't want to wear anything except my besties. I really like the design. I love that it's basic. I mean, mine are black and gray, but they do come in a lot of other colors. I can pair this with anything. I could even put this with a little black dress and I would still look cute. And there was no breaking in period. They were immediately comfortable when I put them on. They really have become my everyday sneakers that I wear everywhere I go. Vessies are my go-to shoe. I leave them by the door. I wear them every day. Check them out using the link down below in the description and in the comments, you get $25 off of any pair of Vessi shoes. Keep your feet dry, folks. Thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring this video. Now onto that plant tour. Hello and welcome back, or welcome to my channel, depending on how long we've known each other. Today, I'm inviting you into my little living room. This is just one of the four corners, and I'm gonna show you all of the plants in my living room. Right after I let my cat outside, and then 30 seconds later, let her back inside, and then two minutes later, let her outside again. And then a few minutes after that, open the door to let her back inside. <laughs> I'm gonna kill her! I've had a lot of YouTube comments or messages and comments on Instagram from people wondering how did it turn out for those cuttings that you bought in Sweden in 2019? Because I just haven't made a plant tour in a really long time. In 2019, I moved from one city to another. I lost some plants in that move. And then that winter was really hard for me and it was really dreary outside. The weather was absolutely awful. And I didn't know because I, you know, it was the first winter that I spent in this apartment and in this region in France. So I had no idea just how little light we would have. And I didn't have any supplemental like artificial light indoors for my plants. So I lost some plants during the winter of 2019. And then in the summer of 2020, we had this never ending drought that wiped out a few more of my plants because I just could not maintain the appropriate humidity levels in my apartment. I couldn't keep up with the watering. I was really busy and you know, it was summer of 2020. So, <laughs> whoo! And then in the winter of 2020, I was like, okay, I'm ready for winter because last winter I learned how gray and grim and awful my apartment can be. But this winter I've got the artificial lighting on these shelves and that's great. And my begonia cabinet next to my giant patio door, which is the main source of light in this room, the shutter on the door broke in a closed position and they couldn't fix it for like two weeks. They finally came and fixed it. 
like two days later, it broke again. And so I had to spend another like two or three weeks not being able to access my patio. It was a, it was a hard winter. It was a hard winter for my begonias. Tragedy struck again and again and again. We had a hard winter. <laughs> And it wasn't until this year that finally I got caught up in watering. We didn't have a never ending drought. In fact, it rained all summer. I was more worried about the light that my plants were getting because it just kept raining and raining and raining. Anyway, all of this just to say, it's been a long time since I've wanted to show my plant collection because it looked like crap. And I lost a lot of plants and I was feeling pretty heartbroken about it. So I wasn't like, hey, hey, come with me. I'm gonna take you, look and see. I wasn't really in the mood for that because I just kept looking around like that one's dying, that one's dying, that one's dying too? When did you start dying? I'm sorry, I'm getting worked up. This is just a calm, chill video. We're just having a nice time together, you and me. Grab a blankie, cozy up, get a warm mug of something, glass of wine, I don't know, whatever floats your boat. Oh, I, I should also explain the wigs, yes. Some people are going to have questions about the wigs. I have a second channel called Little Miss Wiggy, um, and so I keep some of my collection of wigs up there. It's not creepy. It's not creepy. Take it back. I'm gonna start down here with this plant in the corner. This is Hoya obovata. A lot of people are familiar with it. It's not a rare Hoya. It's a little dusty. I just realized I need to dust it. I acquired this from a woman who has the Instagram name Broglebun. In May 2019, I hosted a meetup for a bunch of plant lovers who, you know, had followed each other on Instagram. So people came from like, I don't know, Germany, Scotland, other countries, I can't remember. <laughs> to meet up in Paris and have a good time, to go plant shopping and uh, you know, we went out drinking and we did, I think I went clubbing. Yeah, it's been a while, but, <laughs> but I ended up going clubbing with some people. We had a great time. And she brought some obovata cuttings and she gave me this one, the very slow growing Hoya. This one is particularly obstinate. And unfortunately I recently, I think I have to treat it for root rot. I think I've, I've made a mistake in my watering regimen. So I'll be taking the roots out and checking on them pretty soon. I do have a video on root rot if you want to see it. I'll, you'll see it in the top corner, okay? You'll see it. Oh boy, oh boy, be careful. Don't hit your head. Hoya species Borneo gunungating, and I'm sorry, I always say it incorrectly and I can never remember how to say it. This is just an absolutely beautiful Hoya. It's not growing very well for me right now. You can see um, the leaves have gotten kind of crinkled up. I let it dry out at one point a little too much, and now it's been a little bit of a stubborn grower. <laughs> so fingers crossed everything is okay now and that we've solved it together. I actually intended to acquire this one when I went to Sweden. I went to like this big garden expo in 2019, really early in the year, and I acquired some Hoyas from the Swedish Hoya Society. I do have a video. I do have that Hoya haul online. It's from early 2019. I can, I can put that card on here too, but they didn't have it because I came a day after the expo started and of course people bought out this cutting and I was pretty sad about it. <laughs> so I mentioned it in one of my videos and this wonderful, really sweet woman named Ilva from Sweden contacted me and asked me, do you want that cutting? Because I have that plant and I would love to send it to you. And she and Camilla from the Swedish Hoya Society sent me just a busload of Hoya cuttings. But unfortunately at the time, the mail system here in France, I think they were on strike and the temperatures dropped really low. So the plants were stuck in the mail for like two or three weeks or something like that. And they just, I lost most of them before they arrived. But this one made it, which I'm very thankful for. It's a hearty little, hearty little Hoya. Oh, it's just a beautiful part of my collection that I really adore, but I wish that it were growing a little better. I'm concerned. You go down there. Um, this one is like, this is not worth showing. <laughs> but I know that if you see it on the shelf, you're gonna be like, why didn't you show that one? Um, yeah, do you wanna see? <laughs> this is Begonia aconitifolia Hildegard Schneider. But last winter, when the shutter got stuck and my begonias didn't get light, this one began to lose leaves. It got in really bad shape. And so it became really stemmy. Like it was this really long stem with some leaves on the end. So I recently took a cutting 
and I have them rooting in a glass of water. I'm just gonna start over. But I am gonna put this under my grow lights because I'd say two or three times I've had begonias bounce back if I'm really patient. Fingers crossed. I can't believe I just talked this much about a stump. I'm so sorry. Hey friend. This is a lovely lady. This is the lovely Hoya Australis Lisa. Because it's beautiful watercolor-esque leaves. I just put it on this trellis yesterday. So you'll notice it's not climbing at the moment. It's just kind of like hanging over the edges, but this is a climber. I have a really big Hoya Australis in this room. It's very much a climber. It's a fast climber. But since this is a variegated plant, it's a very slow grower. I bought this in, I want to say either late 2018 or early 2019 from a plant store in the Netherlands that is no longer in business, unfortunately. To be honest, it hasn't gotten much bigger since I bought it, but I think I only paid 16 euros for it. So imagine paying 16 euros for a Hoya Australis Lisa of the size. That was, that was an exciting moment in my life. You can go back to your home. These are both the same plant down here. They're, they're both the same plant, so I'm just gonna show you one. This is Hoya Lobi. I bought this one as a cutting from an eBay vendor in the UK. And then the other Hoya Lobi is one of the cuttings that I received from Camilla and Ilva when they sent me that, you know, box of cuttings. This one has never bloomed, but the bigger one that I received from Camilla and Ilva has bloomed a couple of times. I'd say it blooms every other month. If you get really close to the blooms, they have kind of a, a nice floral scent, but it's not very strong. It doesn't like fill the room. Not my favorite Hoya, to be honest. It's a terrestrial Hoya. Hoya. It's a terrestrial Hoya. Why can't I say Hoya? Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a long video. This is a terrestrial Hoya and I'm just not a fan. I don't like the way that it grows. I have it staked, but it's not a climber. The reason I have it staked is because otherwise it just grows straight out and it takes up so much space. I'm so lucky to have two of these. No, seriously, I'm really, really grateful to Eva and Camila for sending me a big mystery box of Hoya cuttings. This just isn't one of my favorite Hoya types. What else do we have? What else do we have? This Hoya is one of the most problematic Hoya I've ever had in the history of having plants. It just has never grown more than this. And I have had to reroot it two times. I got this from Rion Orchidée in 2019, the spring of 2019. I went to their greenhouses, which are in the north of France, but it was like a lot of trains and buses from here. I brought back three Hoyas, Callistophylla, which didn't make it, this son of a bee, and Hoya fungi, which is doing great, and you'll see it in a moment. But this one, for, for whatever reason, it just would not root very well. The roots were just not expand, like I just could not get the thing to thrive. And then I saw that it began to get root rot, so I put it in a bit, like I rerooted, it's just, it's been a nightmare. It's been an absolute nightmare having this Hoya. It's one of my favorites. Visually, I think it's a beautiful Hoya. I love it. It's fantastic. But it's been so frustrating to grow. It just, it's always in an eternal state of like, <sighs> that's its eternal state, this Hoya. Really frustrating for me. I wish it would grow. I love it a lot and I wish it would grow. This is sadly what remains of a very large lacunosa plant that I owned. Hoya lacunosa is hands down one of my favorite Hoyas. And I used to have this really big plant. I also bought that for like 16 euros in Paris. It would bloom all the time and the blooms smell so wonderful. They fill the entire apartment with their beautiful scent at around 6 or 7 p.m. And unfortunately the summer drought of 2020 just slaughtered my lacunosa because they require higher humidity. So I, I did manage to save a little cutting of it and we're hanging in there. We're doing our best. This, this, this little one, that's Hoya Memoria. I've got a bigger one. I'll show you the bigger one. Hoya Memoria. And yes, I know someone in the comments is going to say, are you sure that's not Hoya Pubiclix? And yes, I am. The leaves are very, very long. Like when I bought it, the leaves were very short. So I had no idea just how long Hoya memoria leaves could get because I had never seen one before. But they do get very long. It's a it's a lovely Hoya. It doesn't really ask much. It hasn't bloomed. Um, it kind of just exists here with me and I'm okay with that. 
I like a plant that doesn't ask too much of me and just kind of looks nice in the corner. What friends, huh? What friends? Okay, what else have we got? Oh yeah, you. So this is Hoya Nicholsonia. It's Nicholsonia or Nicholsonia. I apologize for not remembering how to say that scientific name. I bought this as a cutting from Rian Orchidée, but I ordered it last December. So December of 2020, I got this for myself as a Christmas present with a handful of other cuttings and it's doing really well. The cutting had three peduncles on it, but it hasn't threatened to bloom at all. But they are very long peduncles, so I think that this came from an older plant that has bloomed many times because it looks like the peduncles have bloomed again and again. It's a lovely Hoya. I think it's beautiful. I was attracted to it because it can get sun stressed. They turn a really pretty pinkish color, and I'm kind of attracted to that. Unfor I mean, not unfortunately, like this one just isn't under extreme lighting conditions. So it's pretty green, but I really don't mind. It's it's a lovely Hoya. It's really easy to care for and it's growing really well for me. I'm happy. See, it's putting on a little baby leaf. You see, little baby leaf. So this, we've got a problem on our hands here. We've got a big problem. This is um, Hoya Crinkle 8. This is not a rare Hoya to come across in France. It's often in the greenhouse that I frequent. Sadly, this one has suffered from some root rot. We gotta fix that. <laughs> we gotta take care of that. So right now it's like, it's coming out of its pot. Cause yesterday I tried to investigate and it just like slipped right out of the pot because the roots have rotted away. It's not in good condition. I might, I will, I will very likely just take a cutting and reroot it. You know, it's unfortunate. I don't wanna lose this plant, but on the other hand, it's also not rare to see it in France, so I know I could just probably go to the greenhouse and find another one pretty quickly if this one doesn't make it. Here we have the queen. This is Hoya Crimson Queen, and you know it's Hoya Crimson Queen because it has the white variegation on the outer margins of the leaf. If you'd like to know the difference between Hoya Crimson Queen and Hoya Crimson Princess, I have a video on that, so you can check out that video. I talk about the difference between those two and also Hoya Australis, and maybe another one, I can't remember. I don't know what to say about it. <laughs> it's a very old cultivar that's been going around for a long time. It's really easy to propagate and share, and so similar to Hoya carnosa, it's very, very common. I see right now that it has a fully white leaf. Some people find those beautiful, other people take them off because they cannot photosynthesize, so they really just take energy away from the plant. I don't I don't really fall one way or the other on this plant. I have it. <laughs> it's a Hoya. <laughs> oh, oh, this is the, the other Hoya Memoria. This one over here. Look, I'm not wearing my glasses, okay? And also, I just put all of these in new pots yesterday. <laughs> so, this one is Hoya Parvaflora. I saw the leaves from afar, I'm not wearing my glasses, and I thought, oh, that's just the extra Hoya Memoria cutting. It's not! I got this in the plant hall of December 2020 with the other Hoyas that I bought from Rian Orchidée. It's nice. It's still in the original mix that it came in, and I think I need to repot it into a new mix. But so far, it's not a real fast grower, but it's a nice little Hoya. To me, it looks similar to a, a really little Hoya Memoria, but I know I'm gonna catch some flack for saying that, so maybe I should take it back now. I'm so sorry. It's very unique. It's a very unique plant. It does not look anything like Hoya Memoria. Don't come for me. This is Hoya Hishkeliana. It's grown quite a bit since I got it. Another cutting that I received in December 2020 from Rian Orchidée with the Parvoflora and the others. Lovely little Hoya. Very happy with it. It's growing so quickly. It's just got these little, these little leaves that are, they're like really thin Hoya Breviolata leaves. I don't know why I'm comparing Hoyas to other Hoyas. I'm trying to remember why exactly I was attracted to this Hoya because this isn't really like in line with most Hoyas that I would go for. So there must be a reason, but I can't remember the reason right now. But I'm happy after all, like it's, it's a very, very sweet little Hoya. Which one I use is next. How's about you? Oh, you're so cute. This is Hoya species affinity, Bertonia variegata. I bought this from Camilla in Sweden in 2019 from, you know, the Swedish Hoya Society. And she talked me into it. I wasn't sure about it because at the time it didn't show any variegation. The leaves looked completely green, kind of a dark green, and um, it didn't seem very appealing to me, and she was like, no, 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 no. Take it home. I promise, you're gonna like it. And she was not wrong. And when I put it under really bright lights, it even gets some pink on the edges. It's beautiful. 
And the leaves are a little pubescent, which means they're like a little fuzzy. And they're so cute. They're so tiny and fuzzy and cute. I don't really touch it much because I'm afraid I'm going to damage it. It's such a slow, slow, slow grower. It's only grown like six inches. To some people, six inches is a lot. So <laughs> I don't want to be cruel. <laughs> it's only grown this little amount since I got it in early 2019. So, you know, it's, it's been quite some time, but it, it's uh, very easy to take care of and it's really pretty. This is Hoya fungi. Gorgeous. Now, if you remember the Hoya Dekiai, that little thing that just won't grow for me and I've been trying and trying and trying, I bought this at the same time. And this has just turned into a huge, beautiful beast with gigantic leaves that are fuzzy. I think it has four or five peduncles. I know that it lost one. This, I mean, <laughs> you wanna talk about favorite Hoyas. This plant is so beautiful. It really is. It's gorgeous. And the leaves are so big and beautiful. They have that Finlaysoni look where you can see all of the inner workings of the leaf and the contrast between the dark and the light just makes these leaves really beautiful pieces of art. There you go. Under the bell jar. Hoya Kodata Sumatra. I'm trying to get it, there we go. Nice picture of the leaf. Another cutting that I purchased from Huyanoki Day last December. It's bloomed probably four or five times at this point. I noticed that when I keep it under the bell jar, it does, it does much better. Very cute little leaves with very slightly, um, I don't know, ribbon-like edges. And it's also pubescent, it's kind of fuzzy. But the flowers are where it's at. The flowers are really cute. They're like, like they just look really fluffy and fuzzy. Um, I do need to put it on a trellis. You can see it's just climbing all over the place. But this one really needs a lot of humidity to thrive. So I've been keeping it under the bell jar. You can go home, little friend. Hoya Matilde, Matilda, however you wish to pronounce it. It's spelled Matilde and it was named by a Belgian guy who speaks French. So in French, it would be Mathilde. So that's how I always say it because I know that that's how he would say it. But you can say Matilda if you want, I don't care. This one leaves me sad as well because I bought this one when I bought the Hoya Lacunosa. They were both just huge plants. I got them both for less than 40 euros at a greenhouse in Paris. And la you know, the summer of 2020, they both croaked and so I had to save what I could. So sadly I lost that big plant, but at least I have a cutting from it. One day this will also be a big plant. Good old Hoya Carnosa. I think I got this in 2018. I think it was like this big, just like from here down. So it's grown quite a bit, but this is an easy, gr I mean, everybody's grandmother has one of these Hoyas. Hoya Carnosa is like a staple in the diet of a Hoya collector. I don't really have much to say about it. It's Hoya Carnosa, really common Hoya, beautiful plant. Uh, I mean, it is beautiful. The leaves are really gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I really need to dust my plants again. The minerals from the water build up like on my windows, for example, especially above any radiators. So as soon as summer ends and I have to close the windows and run the humidifier inside, everything starts to get like this cast of mineral deposits on it, which is a little, it's like, it's harmless, but it's annoying because I have to clean the windows like once a week. A little, I got sidetracked because I don't, I don't have anything to say about this plant. So <laughs> if you want to know anything about Hoya Carnosa, feel free to ask, but I'm pretty sure everybody and their mother knows everything there is to know about Hoya Carnosa. This is Hoya Numularioides. I got this with that haul from last December. I got all of those together from Rien Orchidée. And I got this one specifically because I heard that it blooms very early. And they ain't lying when they say it blooms very early because it's only this big and it has already bloomed. Very exciting. However, I seem to have had an allergic reaction to the blooms of this one because the entire two weeks that it was blooming, I was so uncomfortable, especially in the evenings because my nose was all stuffed up, my eyes were itchy, but it was so beautiful and it smelled so lovely. It made my entire living room smell like honey, like deep, rich honey. I refused to remove the flowers and I was like, I'll just take allergy medication and get through it. <laughs> and we made it, we made it. It's just 
an adorable little Hoya. The leaves are a little fuzzy and it blooms really early. I don't know what else you could ask for. It's a, it's a wonderful Hoya. I would recommend this to anyone. And it's very easy care. It doesn't ask a lot. Um, there's a girl looking in my window right now at my cat who's in the hammock. She's taking a picture of him. Okay. Sorry, there's a little girl outside who just like, she can see my cat sitting in the window. I guess she can also see my hello sign and my wigs and she just like took a picture of my home. So <laughs> I don't know how she can't see me through the very sheer curtains, but I'm glad she didn't. Okay. <laughs> Lovely Hoya, I really like it. <laughs> it was so awkward for me. Just really awkward for me. Was that awkward for you, Teddy? He didn't care. He's having a great time. <laughs> Hoya Pubicalix. It's hard to get a close up of that one. A lot of people know this as Hoya Pubicalix Black Dragon. I bought this as a cutting with a couple other Hoyas, like the Hoya Lobi from a UK vendor on eBay. I bought it as a little cutting, I think with like two, maybe three leaves and it's grown um, a lot. So it's typically known as Hoya Pubiclase Black Dragon. That's the name that I purchased, purchased it under, but it's now known as Hoya Pubicarola Black Dragon. It's just a little fact. Just a little fact to throw under your hat. Very, very fast growing Hoya, if given the right conditions. Unstoppable, in fact, like constantly vining. Um, I know Julian Solomita has one and he's allowing it to just grow up his wall. We don't have that much freedom in this apartment, so we try to keep things on the trellis. Over here, I have a Dishidia. Finally, not a Hoya. <laughs> a Wayantha. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly how to say that, but it's okay. I mean, it's a nice plant. It's pretty commonly found at a greenhouse here in Lille that I go to. So it's nothing rare. I just saw it and was like, that's a cool looking plant. I would like to have that. It's never bloomed. And uh, you know, it is a plant. It is very green, beautiful in a hanging basket. Thanks for watching folks. <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have any information to give about this plant. I bought it on a complete and total whim and, I, and that's the extent of my commentary on this plant. So uh, there you go. I just mentioned this plant in a recent video that I made about low, oh God, about low light houseplants. This is Begonia Comte de Meribel. If you'd like to know more about this plant, I would suggest checking out that video. Very, very easy care, low light cane begonia. What are you called? I don't remember. Fitonia, oh, I thought it was started with an S. This was given to me as a gift from my colleagues when I left my previous position in July. They gave me three plants, which was like such a sweet gift. Really, really thoughtful of them. And this is one of those. And so it, like, it's not a plant that I would typically buy, but it's cool. It's a really cool little plant. So I'm doing my best to keep it alive since it was a gift. It's just kind of special to me. Look, this is my cat's igloo. How cute is that? Come here, come here. Okay. Monstera species Peru. I think that this plant looks absolutely delicious in this loop hanger. They sent this to me and uh, I think they sent it to me last year. I don't remember anymore. Time has been weird and the passing of time even weirder. I have a video about propagating this plant because a lot of people have problems propagating them. So if you're interested, you can check that out. Otherwise, I mentioned it in my low light houseplant video that I made a couple videos ago because it's a wonderful low light houseplant. Like that area back there gets very low light in this room and it's still just it's really thriving. It's doing very well there. Oh God, I'm too short. Oh God. Oh no, that's not what I, oh no. I hope that little kid's not watching me. That was stressful guys, that was stressful. Okay. This is Monster at Sony. Another pretty good low light house plant. He's doing pretty okay in that back corner. It's a very long plant, but I've kind of wrapped it around itself a few times because I don't want to grow it on a moss pole because it's like it's naturally a climber and I just kind of like the way that it looks back there I like the way that it looks just like this. That's how I like it. Don't tell me otherwise I have to use a diluted houseplant fertilizer with this I was using like a full dose of houseplant fertilizer during the growing months Last year and it did not like that. It was yellowing very quickly. There's one dead leaf on there. Let's get rid of it I wasn't particularly attracted to this plant. A lot of people were really obsessed with it a year or two ago and I was like, eh, it's okay. 
And then I eventually got one because it's pretty common here and I thought, oh, it'll be a nice like green quote unquote filler plant for my living room and turns out I was correct. I may have shifted my camera because my battery died and I had to change it. Don't get too confused. <laughs> Come here, buddy boy. My good old trusty staghorn ferns. I've had staghorn ferns behind my sofa since the very early days of having my YouTube channel in 2018, so they are very special to me. They look especially fantastic right now because I've been keeping them under a Soltec Solutions grow light. If you wanna know more about that, you can check out my videos on Soltec Solutions and the Highland Track Light System. I think they're really wacky and cool. I just think it's a really cool plant. <laughs> I think they're really neat. I know they're not for everybody. I know some people think that they they look like ripped up ribbons or something, but I just think they're super funky. They're just very me, you know? I keep them on this wood because they're epiphytes and they naturally grow on the sides of trees. I have a few videos on staghorn ferns. I know I made one in the early days, like information about them, care requirements, etc. And then I made another one about how I water my staghorn ferns. Like basically I just take them off the wall, stick them in my shower, water them down, let them dry for like an hour and hang them back up. It's very easy. I have another one about mounting them, which I made like in the last year. So if you're interested in learning more about staghorn ferns, you can find plenty of staghorn fern content on my channel because I am a staghorn fern stan. You cannot change my mind. Okay. This took much longer than I had imagined and uh, I have an appointment to get to. So I'm gonna have to make this a two part series, I guess. That was unexpected. <laughs> I thought I would cruise right through these plants, but that was not the case. So I want to thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up. Share my content if you have the opportunity because it really does help me as a content creator. Definitely subscribe if you want to see more plant content. And part number two, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. One big thank you to my $10 patrons, Nell, Anthony Ranking, Frederick Bowman, Emily, and Carolyn Green. My $6.50 patron, Michelle A. My $5 patrons, Gillian Mershon, Jessica Forbes, Darcy Levitch, Casey Smear, Natopoulos, Tisha McCann, Michelle Sadlowski, Cassandra Carr, James Kopp, Maggie, Jerry Parker, Abby Clark, Leah A., Miranda Moyer, Fenner Lamb, Haley, Giselle Dow, Adam Bansoff, Erin Meow, and Kayla Mann. My $2 patrons, Amin, Karen, Steve A., and Pamela. My $1.50 patron, Tina Halberg. My $1 patrons, Brianna Phillips, Emily Cephalu Plankro, underscore 50 Astro. Bree, Amanda Panda, Ashley Eagle, Lydia, Gracie, Leda Anastasia, Cassandra Lois, Michelle Mikens, Charlotte Dawson, Sophia, JJ Garibay, Elizabeth Valesquez, Wen Yang Zeng, Josie, Jordan Jepson, Nicholas Curtis, Lexi Haynes, Sophia Clark, Jesse, Linda Thea, Claire Lynn, Elizabeth Mary, and Denise Grimm. Thank you again to Vessi for sponsoring this video as well. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you next time.